Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's webinar. Uh, we are really excited to show you the Experience Controls textbook app. And before I uh, pass the microphone to Peter, uh, let me introduce him. He is a curriculum manager at Quanser, and he and his team uh, develop all the course materials that come with Quanser hardware platforms for controls, robotics, and mechatronics. Pete and his team are really passionate about engineering education, and now he will show you what they were working on in the last couple of months. Thanks very much, everyone, for, for joining. But without further ado, let's, get, uh, let's dive into the Experience Controls textbook. So the first question that we'll talk about is one that is sort of a, a question we've been getting quite a lot, which is why, why Kwanzaa? Why have we decided to do this particular project? Um, over the last 30 years, which plays into the motivation a little bit, we've been at the forefront of developing really experiential and forward-looking material, whether it be hardware or curriculum material or other um, types of uh, pedagogical assets for teaching control systems specifically. We also, as you probably know, have a focus on mechatronics and robotics, but control systems has always been our, our home. It's always been where, we're, where we've started, where we've been most comfortable. and so. As part of that 30-year legacy and part of the a continuation of bringing that experience to other parts of the controls course, um, what we decided to do last year was to embark on this project to really develop something for the controls professor and for the aspect of controls education that we saw being most in need of a paradigm shift, and that was the textbook. The textbook has been the really the linchpin of education for a long time, but especially recently, they've become a little bit dated in terms of the way that they present information for modern students, how interactive they are, how they can be used in the course in terms of modern teaching methods, and also, obviously, the price point is uh, higher, if not just as high as it always has been. And uh, we really feel that this approach we're taking with experience controls, especially with combined with our hardware and the other material that we offer as a company, is really the best learning experience possible for controls education and for control students. So that's our real motivation is, is part of it is the legacy of the company and bringing that experience to bear on the controls course, but part of it is really just giving something back to the community and trying to really help controls education as much as possible. The, uh, the next thing we'll talk about is essentially what the philosophical foundation was for this. So once we decided we were gonna embark on this project, what did we want to build? What were the, the, the sort of foundation aspects of making a textbook that we thought would be really important? Um, some of these are really kind of high level aspects, something like we really wanted examples that were presented to pull from real world scenarios across the multiple disciplines. So not just presenting the sort of thing that we do day in, day out, like DC servo motors and things like that, but really pulling industry examples and really experiential context context for students so they can really understand how controls is used in the real world. Um, part of it was making sure that the language is accessible. Part of it was making sure that we had the ability for students to do a little bit of self-directed learning and really dive into the content and go from topic to topic without being dictated how they should follow a particular flow. But part of it was really a motivation to meet students where they are and really present content in a way that's intuitive to them. So Part of that was our, our first element, which was making sure that the content was a long, strolling, single collection of material so that they really are familiar and understand how they can flip through the content, skip sections, really dive into other sections, and really consume the content the way they expect to see content presented in a long-form way, which is the way it's presented on websites, on mobile devices, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all the places that they live nowadays. Um, we really wanted to make sure the language, like I said, was accessible, but also make sure that the critical takeaways were summarized really clearly to make sure that if they are skimming through the content and don't have time to really digest it, they can see really clearly where the critical aspects of the content are and what they really have to remember if they're going to remember anything. Part of this ties into a, a motivation we've had recently, which is building engineering literacy and trying to make sure that if students really don't necessarily have a full deep understanding of a topic, they can at least talk about it and at least share their insights with other engineers without having to worry about knowing the language of engineering. And then part of this was also making sure that they have questions and prompts as much as possible to promote critical thinking and make sure that they're not just 
reading content, but they're really understanding it and checking in to make sure they're really getting those critical takeaways. So these were the, the real aspects that we really wanted to build into this platform. As we'll, we'll get to in a little bit, and as you've probably already uh, picked up on, it was a mobile app that we decided to develop, and therefore it was very easy for us to do a lot of these different aspects of making sure that they can follow rabbit holes, they can pull content from different locations, things like that. And as part of that also, we get into the student experience, which is because it's mobile-based, you can really take that experience anywhere. At home, you can do self-study, you can play with the interactive elements of the, uh, the content, do practice problems, that kind of study material that you'd expect to have. On the go, whether it's on the bus or, or on the tram, you can take a look at the material and listen to mini lecture podcasts, which is another way we wanted to bring in that multiple levels of understanding and ways of, of consuming the content. So if you can't really stand there with your phone or tablet in front of you, you can at least listen to a podcast and really sort of get a feel for what the content is going to be, whether on your way to the lecture or the lab. In the lecture, you can uh, check your understanding and follow along with the instructor, depending on how you teach your courses, especially for something like a flipped classroom, it'd be very easy to tie in lecture material with the content that's in the, the app. And then before the lab, you can do some practice problems, play with the interactive simulations to make sure that you understand some of what you're going to see when you get into the lab and work with hardware. And uh, you can even really connect to hardware to a certain extent, which we'll talk about in a little bit also. In terms of the professor experience, we really tried to make it a platform that was easy to integrate into a conventional or a new course. We understand that this is a little bit different um, or to a certain extent radically different from how you would typically approach a textbook. and so. We wanted to make sure that it was as easy as possible for you to adopt it. And so whether it's as your primary textbook or as a supplementary piece of resource material, we really feel that with the content we've provided, as well as the additional um, instructor resources, including lectures and problem bank questions and um, the resources we have for practice problems and also the social aspect of being able to join a newsletter and gain some insights into what other professors are doing with the platform, it is something that really can be adopted and really can be used um, effectively in a, con in a conventional course. And so part of this is bringing all of this supplementary material together, making sure that it's easy to use, you can reformat it, you can redistribute it, you can customize it and make it your own, aligning that with lab activities, which is, as I said, what we've always done. So making sure that this content really sits nicely next to the lab curriculum that uh, comes with our hardware and the actual hardware we use to make sure that the consistency is there across the full course experience. And then, like I said, also just getting some insights from other instructors and trying to make sure that this, there's a really effective way to use this material. Part of that really ties in also to the pedagogical motivation I talked about where because this particular platform is so ready to be used for modern teaching methods, um, if you are a little bit concerned about how it can be used for a modern course for something like a flipped classroom or a blended learning context. We try to offer not just some guidance, but also the ability to do that easily, which can sometimes be challenging. So there's a lot of different aspects to how this can be brought into how you teach. In terms of how that complete that material is, as you can see, we cover in terms of sections, the majority of the content, if not all the content that would typically be covered in a conventional undergraduate controls course. We're adding content all the time. You don't have to wait multiple years to get content updates or modifications. We've been making changes almost weekly, if not bi-weekly, in terms of improving the existing content, adding additional content, trying to tune it and really make it as useful as possible. So just rest assured that all the content is there that you would wanna be able to use, as well as the additional resources I talked about in terms of the, the mini lecture podcasts, the end of review questions, the slide decks, problem banks. We're working right now on sample problems that are completely worked for students. Those should be coming in the next couple of months and that will also give students a little bit more of the ability to, to follow along with how you would solve a conventional problem, which is something that we felt was slightly lacking out of the conventional content just because of the way it was presented. And so we've built that up now so that students can actually walk step-by-step step through solved problems. And then, like, as I said, we'll be doing a series of newsletters um, specifically on experience controls and how it's used and how it, it can be really leveraged and used alongside our, our hardware that is existing now and coming in the future. And also a series of webinars to, to help with that as well. So as much as possible, we're trying to help and make sure that this is everything that we'd like it to be for you and your students. So immediately to, to sum all of that up, um, 
we really feel this is a progressive and an innovative way to approach controls. Um, it's a great complement to a new course. We really feel it could fit very easily into an existing course. And uh, it really gives you that power and that uh, ability to leverage not just a modern platform and a modern approach to presenting content, but also the ability to be to maybe take a, a step towards making a really modern controls course and something that uses a little bit more pedagogy that you might typically have um, in terms of those modern approaches. So really, just to sum up, it's comprehensive, modern, and engaging, and from our perspective, the best controls textbook available. So let's talk, let's just dive in, and I'll show you that textbook experience. Um, just give me uh, one second here, and I'll connect my mobile device, and then we'll, we'll get started. If you have uh, any questions, feel free to reach out to us, and uh, we'll just get started here in one second. Perfect. All right, so I've just connected my my phone here, so you should be able to see my phone on your screen. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just go through a few of the modules. I'd encourage you to either follow along or to download the the app and uh, take a look at this content yourself. You can always look back at the recording if you forgot what I did, but um, I just want to show you a couple key elements of what the app experience is like, so you get a feel for the breadth of content and some of the decisions we've made in terms of how we've created this material. As you can see, first off, as I said, almost all the topics you would expect to find in the controls course are covered, everything from introduction to controls through modeling and PID control, and then getting into things like lead lack and state space and uh, different aspects of control schemes and structures. We have complete case studies that talk about some of the, again, the industrial applications of these controls. And then there's a hardware experience I'll show you in a little while as well. So uh, what I think I'll start with is just if I go back up to hardware integration, because of, again, the, the company we are, we lead with uh, how controls really fits together with actual hardware and implementation. So if I jump into, let's say, something like data acquisition, you can see we start with a really brief overview of the motivation behind why you should learn about this topic. Every single module starts with this motivation statement for what the point is for learning about this particular concept from sensors all the way through to observers. It will give you a motivation for why this is important. And then we, as you can see, we cover um, the content in a way that's really intuitive. We have these green callouts where you can actually look through content and learn about just sort of a refresher on what that concept is. As I said earlier, you can link from modules to modules. We have these, these basics collections that talk about really the key aspects of what a particular topic is all about, um, go through some different demonstrations and examples and images and things like that so you can see exactly what we're talking about. But then really quickly, we get to these interactive aspects. And this is really where the textbook comes to life and what we've really built every module around. So for something that's as simple as data acquisition, where you're talking about sample rates, I can just change the analog frequency of my signal, see how my sample rate starts to affect the way that the actual um, data comes out. So if I'm sampling this at a low rate, if I start increasing my frequency and increasing my frequency, all of a sudden I get aliased. And so they can, students can immediately see something as simple as how you're sampling a signal really come to life and really become intuitive. Uh, we also talk about things like bits of resolution and they can do the same thing to see how that affects their signal and really immediately understand this concept. So that's a pretty simple interaction. If I wanna do something a little bit more complex, I might jump down to PID control. And if I jump into something like, let's say PI control, then in this particular context, again, we're introducing the topics. You can see that there's in the top links to other um, modules if I wanna dive a little bit more deeper into what proportional control was, if I've forgotten about that. Um, we have a full equation rendering system. You can look at all the block diagrams you typically look at. But then again, really quickly, we jump into a real-time closed-loop simulation of an actual plant system. This is running in real time on the device using a whole simulation platform we've developed ourselves over the last several years. And you can tune the parameters of this response really quickly and see how they affect the system and how it responds, how the different aspects of the control approach are affecting it. Um, if I jump to something like PD control, in this case, we're talking about manipulator control. 
again, we talk about the basics, talk about the equations and the structures, but then again, very quickly get into a simulation where we're looking at the response of the manipulator and trying to understand how that manipulator response is being affected by tuning our parameters for those joint controllers and things like that. We can even introduce noise, see how noise affects the response. We can introduce filtering to try to compensate for the noise, but that again will affect the response of the system. All of this completely in real time, really to give students, a, a like I said, a really strong understanding of what these concepts are talking about and what the real important takeaways are. And again, to that point, they can check their understanding, they can answer some questions to see if they've understood some of the aspects of how this particular concept comes to life. And then if I jump into something a little bit more interesting again, to emphasize the mobility of this and why we chose to really emphasize mobile devices, something as complex as observers for students to kind of get their mind around. We talk about, again, the, the diagrammatic approach to it, how they're used in industry, how IMUs and quadcopters use observers to really cover the context and the material that they want to cover. But then when I get down to the simulation, hit run simulation and this looks a little bit strange it's difficult to understand what's happening here the plots are getting some data but what's actually happening is i'm using the imu on my phone as i move my phone around and an observer running on my phone using our simulation engine to estimate the pose of my phone in real time so now they immediately see not just how observers are used but actually how observers are possibly used on their actual phone that's in their hand at that time so it's really interesting for them to see how this device in their pocket is not just used to show simulations and animations and play games and the things they typically understand, but how it can be used in real engineering. And then finally, the one thing I'll talk about is um, this remote hardware experience. So this was an idea that we had, which was to give students really some insight into what actual um, implementation hardware is like and how it affects the real response of a system. So if I connect to the hardware here, hopefully uh, it's not in use. Oh, it looks like it is in use, unfortunately. Um, I might have to uh, leave you to investigate the hardware experience on your own. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, it's only used one person at a time. So um, it doesn't look like it's going to be able to be used at the moment. Um, but that being said, we encourage you to investigate that and to learn about how that works. Um, it basically gives you the ability to remotely connect to hardware here at the office and you can see the response and um, for a couple of minutes just play with hardware and see how that affects the response of a system. So there's a lot of different material here. As I said, it's all really based on these experiential interactions between students and the, uh, the instructors and really is focused on making sure that they can understand these concepts and really understand the key takeaways. Um, so beyond that, um, I'm going to disconnect from my phone here, and uh, we have a few questions that uh, we'll cover just to uh, catch up a little bit on some of the questions you've been asking. Um, the first one we'll talk about is, do you have plans to make the textbook available in other languages? It's definitely something we've been talking about. We have currently plans to translate the textbook material into Spanish. We have a partner who has volunteered to take the material once it's complete, which I think we're nearing very, very soon. And uh, he's just, um, committed to investing his time into translating the material into Spanish. We're not 100% sure how that will then be distributed once the content has been translated, but um, we're pretty confident that there should be a way, whether it is through the actual app store mechanisms or through um, individual um, app localization where we should be able to make that available. The uh, other qu uh, question here that we get quite a lot actually is can we add our own content to the app? Um, at the moment, no. At the moment, the, the content is, is closed from the material that we've developed here in-house. Um, we do have a platform available that this particular um, technology was built on. And using that technology, the QDEX platform, it is um, read, re freely available for you to use to build this type of content for your students. We have hundreds of pages of documentation and guides online for how to create this type of content, how to distribute it to your students, that kind of thing. So as a complement to this, we, you do absolutely have the ability to create content like this for your students, but in terms of integrating it into the textbook itself, that isn't actually currently available, unfortunately. 
Um, we are, however, interested in possibly in the future creating other versions of the textbook for other topics. And so we might be open to that as well in the future. Um, this would be the kind of thing that we could uh, we could sort of ask you to talk to your local um, sales representative or your local um, distributor or even reach out to us and we can have a conversation about how to make that possible for you and uh, what exactly your needs are in terms of creating content for your students. Um, and then could you provide a link in your website to download the materials? Um, if you go to www.quanzer.com slash experience dash controls, um, or if you go to quanzer.com and look at the banner, the banner will have a link to the material there. And once you go to that website, there's an immediate link to download the instructor material. It's just an open Google Drive where we have all the material saved as Google Docs and Google presentations. And so you can download them in whatever format you see fit, whether it's through Microsoft Word or through PDF or PowerPoint, however you want to take a look at that content, that's all freely available through that Google Drive. And as I said, we'll be updating that as we go all the time. So um, we can do that. The one thing we request is that um, the material is only gonna be available to instructors. Um, and so, um, obviously, because we have included questions, we'd like to be treated as an exam bank. We have sort of ask you not to distribute it to your students in terms of giving them the solutions or giving them open access to that material. Um, one question that's come up is, what are the classic textbooks we used as a basis? Um, for a lot of the material, we actually just used the existing resources that we've developed over the last 20 or 30 years in-house in terms of all of our um, hundreds if not thousands of pages of curriculum and background sections and material that we've developed as a company. Um, we did obviously, um, in terms of thinking about different approaches, talking about different concepts, use um, a number of different conventional controls textbooks. We have a whole shelf of textbooks that we've used over the years to get some insights into how different topics are approached. Um, everything from Bishop and Nice to Golnaragi and um, a wide variety of other presenters, um, Carl Astrom. Um, we've actually worked quite closely with in the past and some of the material in the PowerPoint slides has come with our, our collaborations with Carl Astrom. Um, so we've used those as inspiration, but again, I'll emphasize the material is all completely created in-house by us, by uh, our team. Um, and so it's a very particular flavor and a particular um, approach to how this material is presented. Um, is there any copyright limitation on using the materials? Um, that's an excellent question. That was something that came up in the last couple of weeks for our team as well. Um, at the moment, we're distributing the resources um, essentially under a, an attribution license. So we're basically saying if you could um, access the materials and use them as a recognized educator as part of your, um, your efforts as an institution that provides controls education, um, you're completely open to use, modify, and uh, present that material. Um, but I'll be sort of, we wouldn't. We would try to discourage you from distributing it yourself or um, passing it outside of your institution. Um, but other than that, the, it's completely open and usable by you as a as an instructor. Um, in terms of the textbook material, it's public. Obviously, the the back end content and uh, material that we that we have is is part of the application platform but it's a public application that's completely free so um to that end the material that's in the app is completely available um we have a question here can we have simple hardware experiments that can be developed um at your end to be demonstrated during the controls course that can be included also in the app um Hardware experiments are a little bit tricky, as you can see from um, the experience we had here in the demonstration, being able to reliably have access in real time to the hardware can be tricky, especially if, um, if it's a very simple setup here where we have essentially just a, one connection at a time that times out every couple of minutes. Um, the, uh, the, material, the connection to hardware is possible. We're, we're using it here. We've built it up ourselves to make sure that it's robust in real time and, and works the way we want it to behave. Um, we can definitely prescribe um, live hardware demonstrations or how to tie in hardware demonstrations that you do with your course to the material in the textbook. Um, obviously, a lot of the demonstrations and a lot of the examples we have in the textbook are inspired by our hardware and our interactions and the, the experiments and the experiences we have students go through in their conventional labs. So we can definitely prescribe how that can be done. 
Um, but in terms of having the actual um, connections and live hardware in there, um, in the actual textbook, we're working on that a little bit more to give more diverse um, interactive examples than just the particular um, remote servo experience we have right now. I'd like to add a couple tanks experience. I think once we have some new hardware coming out later this year, we'll try to add those as well and really build out a few different examples of how to be able to use this particular approach to um, being able to get a hardware experience a little bit more effectively. But um, at the moment, at least, the uh, we're, we're still thinking through how that can be possible. But um, if you would like to give those demonstrations yourself, we can absolutely help you build those and, uh, and make them work alongside the content. Um, last question, what is the price of the textbook? It is completely free um, on both Android and iOS and all of these sorts of material. Um, it is all completely free. All right, if we don't have any more final questions, um, then I think at this point we'll start to wrap up again. Um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions that occur to you. Um, I'd encourage you once again to download the instructor material and to obviously download the, the textbook app. We really want this to be a collaborative um, project with, with ourselves and with you as, as our partners. And so if you have any insights into how the, the app is being used, how the instructor material can be made better, how it can more easily be integrated into your courses, um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you can reach out to us, like I said, a number of different ways, and uh, even including inside the app itself. And uh, as I said, feel free to let us know what you think and if there's any way we can make this better for you and your students. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And um, also, I want to invite you to, uh, to subscribe to the uh, Experience Controls newsletter so you um, stay up to date on the news about uh, how people are using uh, this app in their uh, controlled courses and uh, any um, updates, any news, any sneak peeks into the newly developed content, um, we will receive those information. Thanks again for joining us and have a great day.